Welcome to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. If you're on a mission to be more frugal with both your time and money, you're in the right place. In this podcast, we talk about topics that help enhance living a frugal lifestyle. The goal is to save time and money where we can so that we can use the rest on what matters most to us. We talk a lot about both time and money management so that we can waste as little as possible on both. We do this while also embracing a progress over perfection mindset. If that sounds good to you, then please stick around for the latest episode right after a few quick words from our sponsor. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. So today I wanted to talk about some tips to simplify decluttering your home. So decluttering can definitely sometimes feel overwhelming if we have let ourselves accumulate more than we really want or need to have in our homes. But sometimes um, in life, we just get so busy that we just kind of put aside things like decluttering. Even if we don't need like a major overhaul, you know, just as part of life, we buy things and we need to declutter. Otherwise, we wind up accumulating excess things. So if we have gotten away from kind of maintaining that for a while, when we think about decluttering, we might envision this big project that we just don't have the time for. But decluttering is really important because it can really help reduce stress in your life. When we have too many things, it's really difficult to keep up with managing and caring for it all. And it can also be really difficult to organize the things that you do have and to find things when you need them if you just have too much stuff. But we often put decluttering, um, we often put decluttering aside because we think it's going to just take too much time to do. And we'll try and maybe wait until we have a big chunk of time to devote to decluttering. But as you know, that might never happen or it might take a really long time before we get like this, you know, hours and hours chunk to sit there decluttering our things. So what we can do instead is really just focus on finding little bits of time to declutter as we live our lives. So just like many other things that we talk about, something is better than nothing. And it will make a big impact in your life to do a little bit of decluttering during the regular course of your life than to wait until you have time to empty and sort through an entire closet. So to get started, on decluttering, the most important thing, again, as with many other things, is not to let perfectionism hold you back from getting started. When you feel like you have to do a complete decluttering of your home, it can feel overwhelming and that can definitely lead you to procrastinate. So try to think of decluttering as part of your regular housework and not this big project that you have to take on. You can easily do little things to declutter without turning it into a huge task. If you grab a wooden spoon while you're cooking and you realize it's broken, throwing it out instead of putting it back, that's decluttering. Like you can do little tiny things as you see things or as you're going through things and declutter one little bit at a time. So don't discount making little bits of progress through your normal daily living. It's not it's not required that you have to spend an entire weekend or an entire day or several hours doing a decluttering project to count. Every little bit does count. Remind yourself if you declutter one drawer in the kitchen, you made progress. So don't focus on the big picture. Small decluttering projects over the course of time are gonna have a really big impact in your home. And one thing you could try and do is break down big tasks into smaller pieces. Like for example, I have a coat closet in my living room that has accumulated what I'm pretty sure is more coats than my family needs. And every time I grab a coat, not right now obviously because it's in the summer, but this was just something that came to mind. Every time I was grabbing a coat or or I was going to put my coat away after coming home for the day or whatever, I would think, oh my gosh, there is way too many coats in this closet. And I would tell myself, we really need to go through these coats. But then I would just shut the door and move on. Because I would envision pulling out all the coats, putting them in a big pile, going through each one. And then, well, I can't really do that because the entire family needs to be home because they need to each ask each person what coats they'd be okay with donating. And since most times our entire family isn't home, and if they are, they probably will not all be willing to stop whatever they're doing to do a decluttering project at that moment. 
So instead, I do nothing. No progress is made and I just move on with my day until the next time I get annoyed with the coat closet. But in reality, even just taking a quick look and seeing one of my own coats that could be put aside to donate would make an impact. If I took just a moment or two to take a look and ask one family member about a coat that I don't think they use anymore, I could make an impact. So we often turn these things into big projects that cause us to procrastinate and do nothing, and we discount the little steps that we could actually do to start making progress on a problem area. So really try and see what you could do to break down any decluttering projects that you might have that you've kind of been delaying on because it just feels overwhelming. Like to me with that coat closet, I am really going to make an effort to try to make little progress by getting rid of one coat here and there as I can rather than envision and and really and and doing this massive project of pulling out everything and having everyone have to be available so that we can go through all the coats. So unless you've never buy anything new at all, we all have to spend some time decluttering or we will accumulate too many things over time. If you feel like you have too much to declutter, it can really help to make a list of the rooms you'd like to make progress in. And then from there, you can make another more detailed list for each room where you just kind of break down the things that you'd like to do into the smallest tasks possible. Because if you have a list of really small tasks, you can easily take a look at it. And if you have 15 or 20 minutes to spare, you can tackle one of those small projects. But if it's like declutter the basement, okay, oh my gosh, that's overwhelming. You're not even gonna wanna approach it. But if you have a list of all these little small tasks that you could do in the basement, you could probably go do one of them on a weekend or whenever you do your regular housework or when you just have a little bit of spare time and actually get something accomplished. So like for for example, in the kitchen, an example might be Um, declutter some items from one drawer. So it doesn't even have to be declutter the entire drawer. Just look in the drawer and see if there's some things you don't want and get rid of them and that counts. Go through mugs and get rid of any that have cracks or stains in them. Things like that. They could be really small little tasks that do count and they will be moving you closer to decluttering. Are you going to have this like immaculately, um, you know, perfectly decluttered space? Probably not if you have a little bit more that you need to go through, but is it going to be better than it is if you just sit around waiting until you have time to do this major project? Definitely. It'll definitely be better. So of course, as we're decluttering, there are some things that come up as challenges because it's not just the matter of going through and getting rid of things, but there is um, an aspect to decluttering that can make certain things hard to decide if we want to declutter them. So one thing that you could do um, is to try to figure out um, what, what challenges you kind of have when you declutter. Is it about the price? Is it sentimental? Like what things challenge you most? And then try to figure out ways to deal with them. One thing that can often make you want to keep something that you don't actually use is the price you paid for it. But if you don't love it and you don't use it, there's no reason to keep it due to the cost. Either way, the money's already gone. And the longer it sits in your house, the longer you're going to feel bad about the money you spent on it. So it's best to just get rid of it and move on. You're not going to get the money back. It's, it's the same either way. Whether you keep the item and you feel bad about having it because you don't use it or you get rid of it, it, actually it's not the same either way because once you get rid of it, you're gonna wind up forgetting about it and then you're not gonna have that guilt anymore that you spent all this money on this item that you don't really use. If you have duplicates of something, keep the best one and donate the other one. Or if it's something useful to have duplicates of, maybe find a useful location to put the other one in Um, if it's taking up too much space in the current location. Like for example, say if you have too many scissors in one location, maybe put a pair in another area that would be convenient to have an extra pair of scissors. Like maybe somewhere where you often open up a bag of dog food or open up, um, I don't know, like uh, toilet paper or paper towels or packages, you know, things where you might need to have a pair of scissors that are not close by to where the original location was. And definitely don't keep things that you don't use. Even if it was a gift, keeping things that you don't 
use and don't really ever expect to use can really make you feel guilty every time you see them, just like with the things that you spent money on that you don't use. So try and donate them and let someone else use them. And then at least you can feel good that they are being used and they're not just sitting there making you feel guilty because they never get used. Ask yourself, if you didn't have this item, would you buy it now? If it's not something that you would be willing to go out and repurchase, if it was something that was available, then maybe it's not something you really value. Also, if you have things that you love, but you keep them stored away where you never see them, try to think if there's a way you could put them into everyday use or display them so that you can actually see them. I know I mentioned um, probably in another decluttering episode that I had done a while back, but I did this with a box of things that we had saved from our wedding. So now rather than them being stored in a bin, they're on display or being used or I tossed them. Certain things that we had saved, we just we just really didn't need or want them. You know how it is when you're kind of saving things from a big event like that. You kind of save like probably sometimes too many things. And I'm like, do I really need this like crinkly napkin or whatever um, extra things I had saved? But so we did get rid of some stuff. But we also had um, things that we kept that I made a nice little shelf in my room that I put on display, like the cake topper, and there's just like some other things that we kept that we put on display. The the cake server, I took the bow off. It had like a little bow on it. I took that off, and I put it in my kitchen drawer, and I use it now as a cake server. So it's neat because it's like I pull it out, and I'm like, oh, this is from our wedding, you know? So rather than have these things stored in a box in the basement where no one ever sees them, we're actually... Um, displaying them or using them. So just try and think if you do have anything packed away that you really don't want to declutter, but that's not really being used, you know, maybe there's an alternate way you can kind of display or use those things. And then for those, what if I end up needing this types of items that we always wind up coming across, really try to think like, how long have I had this without ever needing it? What is the likelihood that I will actually need it? And what would the cost be to repurchase the item if I end up needing something like this in the future? If we keep everything we might ever need one day, we are gonna end up with way too much stuff. So sometimes we really just need to take a risk and get rid of things. The chances are that we're gonna need to replace or, or wind up needing any of those things in the future is small. There might wind up being one or two things where you say, oh, I wish I had kept this or that because I'm, I need it now and I got to go buy another one. But if you think of all the things over the course of time that you end up getting rid of that you didn't wind up needing, it, it really is better to just have the space in your home and take a chance of having to purchase something if, the, if that happens to come up. So then I just have some kind of other random tips about decluttering. So one thing that's important is to keep a place to put items to donate. We might procrastinate on decluttering an item that we want to donate because we don't really have a place to put it. So depending on the size of the item, I often just grab a garbage bag to stick the item in and I put it in a spot in my basement that I know is for items to donate. So when I see enough things have accumulated there, I'll just throw them in the back of my car and go take a ride to the Goodwill um, drop-off center that's by me and get rid of them. So having a place to kind of store items to donate between the time when you decide on donating them and actually make the donation is is really important because if you don't have a place to put them, you could definitely be like, well, maybe I'll wait till later because I don't really know what to do with that right now. Another tip is to do a quick declutter on a timer. If you find yourself with a little bit more time to devote to a specific project, set a timer for 30 minutes or an hour and pick a spot you'd like to improve. You will be really surprised at the impact you can make with just a little a bit of time focused on a specific area. But make sure that you do not like tear everything apart. You really want to just kind of take out a few things at a time that you can go through and not like take an hour and empty out a closet. Now you don't have time to put it back together. Declutter clothes as you go. If you put something on that you don't love, put it aside to declutter it. Don't stick it back in the drawer. If you don't love it now, you're going to be very unlikely to love it later. So if you could just do that as you're living your life and kind of stick things aside to donate as you can, that will make it a lot simpler than having to do a big clothing declutter. 
I also love to declutter clothes and shoes seasonally. We store our fall and winter or our spring and summer clothes away depending on the season. So when we pull out the next season's clothes and pack away the clothes from the season that's ending, I always declutter during that switch. Because it's really a great time to take a look at what clothes or shoes you rarely used the previous season. So it's a pretty good indication that you can probably let it go if a whole season passed and you never touched it. Of course, there's exceptions for certain um, you know, clothing or shoes that we would only wear for special occasions. But, you know, just your regular everyday clothes and shoes, if a whole season went by and you never wanted to wear them, you're probably not going to. So that's a good time to kind of identify some things that you can get rid of. Same goes for season, seasonal decor. Each year when, when you pull down boxes, um, I'm sorry, each year when I pull down my boxes from our attic, um, at various times of the year, whether that be for Christmas or Easter or fall stuff or whatever. Um, when I go through the boxes to put things up, sometimes there winds up being things where I'll look at them and be like, eh, I don't really want to put that up. So rather than putting it back in the box, I'll just say, you know what, I'm just going to donate this. Um, if it's something that I know I'm not really going to use. Sometimes something might just be a little bit more complicated to display or put together that I just don't feel like or have the time to do that year. But if it's something I'm not putting out because I don't really love it, then I'm probably not going to love it again in the future. So it's really a good time because you have everything down, you have it all out. It's a good time to just sort through and see what you might want to get rid of. And then my last tip is to just not take on a bigger project than you can do in the amount of time you have available. There is nothing more likely to discourage you from decluttering than making a giant pile of stuff that you don't really have time to go through. And it's also really exhausting. But by doing smaller projects and actually being able to finish it, you're going to wind up building motivation to do more little projects. So really try to just build in decluttering to your everyday life. Do little things as you can and do bigger projects when you have time, but they do not have to be full weekend projects. They can be 30 minutes or an hour or whatever amount of time you have. But by doing those smaller things throughout your everyday life, it's going to make it a lot less of a need to do much bigger um, decluttering projects. So that's it for today's episode. I hope this maybe motivated you or gave you some ideas for doing some decluttering in your everyday life. And um, that's it for today. I will see you back here next week. So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode. And don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. And you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast. So that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have an awesome day.